Hello, I'm Robert McMullen. I'm a psychiatrist. I went to Georgetown Medical School, which is a wonderful school, I think, and, uh, and to Columbia for my residency, which is a great place to go to learn everything about psychiatry, but especially about psychopharmacology. I also do TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation, which is a giant magnet that you put on various parts of the brain to either inhibit that area or to excite the neurons in that area. And it has often a long-term benefit for depression, although you should still stay on antidepressants. Now some of the atypical depressions I'd like to say something about. One is trazodone. It used to be called Desiro. We mostly use it as a sleeping pill now. 50 milligrams, usually two pills at night, sometimes one pill, sometimes three pills. But the antidepressant dose is something like 400 to 600 milligrams. And at that dose, it's often very sedating. And there's a number of people who I treated with this long ago who did very well, but I had to go up very slowly until they could tolerate the dose. And it's just not usually worth all that trouble. Uh, it can, in rare cases, call, cause priapism, which is an erection that doesn't go away for a few hours. And if men get this, they should uh, immediately go to an emergency room because there's a shot, an injection they can give that will stop this. And if you don't stop it, then uh, the person can become permanently impotent as far as erections go. But, it's, but kind of, it's rather rare. And what are the benefits of that? The well, the benefit of the trazodone is that usually doesn't affect sexual function and it usually doesn't cause weight gain. Although these advantages may be because in part we keep the dose so low using it just for sleep. I've hardly ever seen it used for depression in many many years. Another one that's used is uh, mirtazapine, the brand name was Remeron, and this is a medication that's uh, particularly good at stopping anxiety, and it also has a good antidepressant effect. The main problem with it is that it causes a significant increase in appetite. It makes people very hungry at least some people, and uh, it's somewhat sedating. So many doctors give some of it at bedtime in addition to some other antidepressant so that they're using it as a sleeping pill and as a antidepressant, sort of like an augmenter. The first person I put on it was a fellow who was extremely anxious and chronically depressed, about 50 years old. And he'd been like this many, many years. And I put him on this, and it was like a miracle. He became normal. He felt so good. But a few weeks later, he became a little manic. So he was really a little bipolar, or maybe a lot, but I think a little. and. Uh, you have this risk with any antidepressant because many people who are a bit bipolar have never had a significant high and uh, the antidepressant can make them ha have the biggest high they've ever had. Uh, two others that I'm not as familiar with is vortioxetine, which is Trintalex, and Velazidone, which is Vibrid. And these both seem to work fairly well. 
mostly I have patients on them who were started by somebody else. Uh, medicines that end in don, like velazidone and trazodone, require you to have some food to fully absorb them. So you need about 350 calories, which is about one bagel. Uh, if you don't take it with food, then only 50% of it is absorbed. I never found that to be much of a problem because if you need 100 milligrams of something and uh, and you're taking it without food, so you're not absorb. You're only absorbing half, so you're only getting 50 milligrams. Then you just give the person 200 milligrams, and they'll only get half of it, but they'll still be at that same dose. Another medication, which is quite different, is bupropion or Welbutrin, and it's one of the few antidepressants that's almost never associated with sexual side effects. So I've seen a couple of times where it did. I met the fellow who discovered Zoloft sertraline in a laboratory, in you know, his laboratory, uh, which is, was in a little booth, I think, in a, in a big pharmaceutical company. And I asked him about Wellbutrin and the mechanism. And he laughed and he said, uh, it was sort of a joke to him that uh, we don't know. We don't know exactly what the mechanism is. And it seems like it raises both dopamine and norepinephrine. Uh, two monoamines that uh, significantly help depression and they help concentration. And the bupropion was almost approved as a medication for attention deficit disorder. It definitely helps with attention. But the mechanism seems to be a little complicated, but that's what it ultimately does. And uh, if somebody is very obsessive compulsive, they shouldn't just start out on this because it can activate your OCD if you put the person on a little bit of a serotonin medication first, then often you can add it without a problem. In some people, it's a little overactivating and makes them a little agitated, uh, and that's a problem. You can sometimes avoid it by going up slowly. One thing that's a big problem is that in some people, it causes them to have excessive rages. So somebody will come in and say, Dr. McMullen, uh, I've been working at this same job for 30 years and I'm just the same as I always was, but now I'm having these rages and I get mad at people about something real, but I never got mad and yelled at people like this before. Do you think it has anything to do with bupropion? Yes, it does. And uh, if they lower the dose, it'll go away. There seems to be some, whatever their dose is, it seems to be a threshold problem. And if they just go below that, uh, it usually goes away. And sometimes they can gradually adjust and be able to take a higher dose without this excessive anger. And it's a great medication to use with the SNRIs or the SSRIs because it works basically by a different mechanism so you're having two antidepressants uh, working from different angles and you get better benefit and you generally end up with lower doses of each rather than a big dose of one. Well, the main benefit is that uh, it has no 
bad effects on sexual functioning, except in very rare cases. And the other is that it causes no weight gain at all. In fact, it suppresses appetite a little, so it makes it a little easier to lose weight. So it's from instead of SSRIs or? Uh, you can either, yeah, you, usually, usually I use them together. If I start out on a serotonin type medicine, either an SSRI or an SNRI, and the person does better, then I'd rather not switch to another one. I'd rather augment, and, uh, and the best thing to augment with is bupropion, Wellbutrin. In fact, uh, Wilma Harrison, who used to be the head of research for psychotropic medications at Pfizer, once told me that the combination of Zoloft, sertraline, and Wellbutrin, bupropion, was often called Welloft, Zoloft plus Welbutrin, Welloft. And uh, because they were used so often together, and they are basically more effective when you use them together. With, with the old tricyclics that, that was all we had prior to uh, Prozac, and, and back then I never dreamed that we'd have, si have medications with so little side effects because we had to put up with so many side effects with the tricyclics. The tricyclics basically affected five transmitters. Uh, one serotonin, the other's norepinephrine, and then the three other transmitters just gave side effects. It affected these uh, receptors, but they gave side effects. Now, if you use an SSRI and uh, and Wellbutrin, you're basically only affecting two receptors, or maybe three, and they're just receptors that help uh, without any extra activation of receptors that cause side effects. So, in a way, when you take those two types of medications together, you're still taking less medication than taking one tricyclic. And uh, likewise, if you use a SNRI with uh, Wellbutrin. Yes. And, and uh, one thing I might add is that almost everyone who has a depression should probably be taking a low dose of lithium. And... Uh, those of us who are prone to depression, and especially people that are a bit more on the very bipolar side, have a higher rate of Alzheimer's disease, and there is a lot of evidence now that lithium prevents Alzheimer's disease. But even 150 milligrams, 150 milligrams, has a really good effect with depression. I have 49 people that responded within a week or two of my adding it to some other antidepressant. The dose that manic depressives use are, is something like 1,200 milligrams, but low doses work for depression. If you go too high, it stops working. So a dose between 150 and 450 is often extremely good for depression. Uh, I have a lady I saw just recently who I've treated for 30 years, and she said that all her life she's had about two episodes per week where she would have tremendous depression come over her for about 10 minutes. Just so painful she could hardly stand it. And it was unpredictable when this would happen, but it was about twice a week. Even during periods where she was doing really well. And recently she realized, to her amazement, that she hasn't had one of these episodes in at least a year. 
and uh, maybe a year and a half. It's kind of hard to uh, know, but uh, she's astonished at this change. And it was two years ago that we started her on 150 milligrams a day of lithium. She also thinks her baseline mood, which was a little below normal, is a little bit better. But I have quite a few people like this whose mood seemed to get better six months or a year after they were on this low dose. And they are just different and a little bit more animated and a little less negative ever since they've been on it. It's hard to prove that it's secondary to that, but uh, I think it may be. Thank you very much, Dr.